Epiphone claims these are inspired by the Gibson Custom Shop. Let's see if they're any good. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. Epiphone has this new lineup with a new logo design saying Epiphone inspired by Gibson Custom Shop. Basically, what they're trying to do here is bridge the gap between Epiphone's, low-end Gibson's, and the high-end custom shops. Meaning, we have an Epiphone that is an import guitar that looks like the high-end custom shops, but it has the price point of a low-end Gibson. So previously, we've talked about the 1959 Epiphone Les Paul Standard. I didn't review the base model, but I did the Joe Bob. Anamasa signature. That was a great guitar. They also did the 61 SG LP standards, which I wasn't as in love with, but they were very nice guitars. But they just recently dropped the 58 Carina V and the 58 Carina Explorer. So let's go ahead and see what 1299 brand new gets you. Because I'm not going to lie, when I first saw these things launch at 1300 bucks, I was like, ah, that's kind of expensive for an Epiphone. But then I saw that they came with these giant <laughs> cases. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's actually quite the nice added value feature here a lot of Epiphones don't have a case. So they actually did a very good job at recreating the Gibson Custom Shop version of these cases. The outside material isn't exactly the same, but it's close enough. And you get that cool new logo we were talking about, Epiphone inspired by Gibson Custom. I like the whole diamond within the diamond shape. It's like a little fancy bow tie. But it looks like this Tolex is going to be very prone to scuffs, nicks, and dings. I mean, even straight out of the box, you got a couple of imperfections, but it's not too bad. But we got one, two, three, and a fourth latch. Let's go ahead and see which one of these that I had purchased. Oh, wow. That's... That's a really bright neon pink interior. So I got the White Guard Explorer. So let's go ahead and get my first impressions of this thing before we kind of learn about them. Because I'm expecting a big chunky neck on one of these. Because you got to remember, I've had almost all these Gibson Custom Shop iterations. It is a very nice chunky neck profile. However, I don't think it's got quite the exact same girth as the Custom Shop ones. We'll get all the specs on the workbench to see if it's right for you, though. But the finish is interesting. It's kind of almost a blend between a satin and a full-on gloss. Like, it's not a whole goopy goop gloss. It has a nice light sheen to it, so that's kind of interesting. To illustrate the difference in the finish, here's my Theodore. I'm not comparing the color because this is an alder body versus the Carina. But do you see how glossy this one looks? It reflects the light in just a slightly different way. Whereas when you come over here, it's a little bit more of a matted over look. But I think as a player, you might actually prefer this because it's very smooth to the touch. So think all the benefits of a satin finish, except for it's just a little bit more glossy. Holding it, it actually feels pretty light and very resonant. So far, the Indian Laurel fretboard doesn't look too bad. It actually looks very close to Rosewood. That was pretty much the only spec on these things. I was like, ah, man, I wish it could have been a little bit higher spec'd. All right, so first impressions out of the way. What I really like about the new 58 Carina V and 58 Carina Epiphone Explorer is the fact that they give you the option of picking a white guard or a black guard, just like the Gibson Custom Shop models. But the coolest thing to me is that these are a very inclusive model. They're offering both right-handed and left-handed variations, which I am hoping and praying for lefties out there that they offer this on the rest of the Epiphone Inspired by Custom Shop series. To get the lefty 59 LP standards, that would truly be a monumental, groundbreaking move. And even though $12.99 sounds like a lot, you have to remember the Gibson Custom Shops are $10,000. And if you want the Brazilian Rosewood fretboard, that was a limited edition run. It was $20K for the Vs and $30K for the Explorers, if you could find one. I mean, those Explorers are like $70K plus nowadays. So relatively speaking, these are affordable. Now, please don't get this confused. These Epiphones are still made in China. The Gibson Custom Shop did not create them. That's not to say that there aren't Epiphones that were created within the Gibson Custom Shop, but this is not one of those. This is basically the Gibson Custom Shop saying, yeah, you want to do this, this, and this, and that's probably about the specs you'd want. Or it's, here's how the Custom Shop ones are done. Here's what we can recreate at the price point. Because I found it very interesting that these don't actually have the same pickups in it. So the new ones actually have Burst Bucker 2 and 3 pickups, which are fantastic, but the 10K Custom Shops actually have custom buckers. Now, if you were to price those two pickup sets out, the burst buckers are about 150 bucks each, whereas the custom buckers are $270 each. So there is about a $220 price difference between those pickups, but it really just comes down to personal preference on what you want. And if you really wanted the custom buckers, they do sell them separately. Now, there's been other Epiphone Carina Explorers and V runs in the past. However, I'm sure every time they do it, they get slightly more spec correct. But as far as I'm aware, this is the first time that they've offered them with Gibson Electronics in this higher end variety. So if you're not real big on modifying used guitars, you'd rather just have something factory stock and having the cream of the crop, I think that's exactly who this is more so marketed towards. 
But let's come back to the case. Do we have any cool case candy? Surprisingly, no. I thought for sure they would give us like little COA booklets or something, but it just seems to be all your regular Epiphone stickers and warranty information. You also get a case key and a couple of silica baggies. And if we're being critical here, uh, the case isn't actually that good of a fit. Like, the guitar fits, but it sure does slide around a lot. But honestly, it looks like it's because the foam up here ended up compressing, maybe during the shipping process. Because had this been a more rigid foam, I think the fit would have been a little bit more snug. But as far as keeping the headstock off the floor of the case, that seems to be perfectly fine. And just to compare the cases a little bit more, I brought out my Theodore case, which is very similar in construction, maybe not exactly the same, but you can see the color difference and the feel of the material. This is definitely a higher end case, but this is a very faithful recreation. It's just, you know, the feel difference between the two. I mean, if you're really comparing them, it is quite different, but I would say they nailed the look of the case. But here's what I was commenting on earlier, the interior color. So this one's like a little bit more of a lavenderish purple, whereas over here it's like a hot pink. I mean, it is night and day difference here. But to be fair, most of the Epiphone ones do have this hot pink interior. So I'd say that's a good crash course on if you're going to like this new Epiphone model or not. But let's get a little bit more nitty gritty and throw it on the workbench to take a look at its detailed parts and specs. All right, let's dig in here. So the first thing I was curious about is how many pieces are these things being made out of? Because a lot of Epiphone Explorers, they're made out of a whole bunch of pieces, but it almost looks like it's just a one single piece, but that is not the case. If you're ever curious how many pieces your guitar is, the best way to do that is looking at the end grain down here on the side. So using that knowledge, looking at here, you can see, oh yeah, it's a very visible center seam. However, I don't see any more seam lines. Just looking at the top, it looks like there might be one right here. But no, the actual seam is right here, so it is a very close match. They did a great job on that. Such a good job. I was curious, were they putting like a Karina veneer over top to hide all the pieces? But here's something that I found that proves against that theory. Underneath our pick guard right here, you can actually see our long neck tenon and then how they fill it in with all the glue. So I would say that's pretty well specced, same way as the Gibson Custom Shops. As far as the route itself, here's what it looks like. It's a little bit rough in here. They definitely finished over some splintery wood, but there's an M marking in our neck pickup cavity and another one in our bridge pickup cavity. But then you also get your typical QR code in our bridge pickup position as well as our model identifier. I'm really curious what all these M's and W's are standing for though because it's just all over. This one over here looks more like an N. However, yes indeed, they were not lying. We have Gibson Burst Bucker 2 in the neck and a Burst Bucker 3 in the bridge. And wow, they're really cranking these out pretty early for the 2023 release because the pickups were made in mid-July of the previous year. But as far as the readings go, 8.41k ohms in the bridge, 8.03 in the neck, and the middle position for fun at 4.11. And over here we have our regular route. You can see a little bit of chip out as they were routing some of the areas for the wires to go through and maybe a little bit of sloppiness to the finish right in this area. But overall, the quality seems to be pretty all right. I was honestly expecting a little bit worse, but easily the worst thing that I found about this guitar is actually the neck pickup. The routing machine just took a little bit too much in this area, like it almost got bumped. And you can see another light splintered phenomenon right here where the wood kind of chipped in there. But thankfully, for the most part, when the pickup is installed, the ring covers it. But if you know to look for it right there, you can just barely see the indent. But you've really got to be looking for that. Now let's check out our bridge and tailpiece. It's your typical Epiphone Loctone series, labeled B2 in the bridge. It has a nice ABR1-like setup, but with Nashville-style studs. And I like that the top of the threaded screw has a flat screwdriver adjustment on it. So that could help you raise or lower the post if needed. Because that's the thing about these, you can easily turn just the post to raise it, or the thumb wheel. So if your post is sticking up too much and hitting your hand, depending how you have that set up, that can be nice to sink that down into the body a bit more. The tailpiece is also gold and Loctone series, and reads Epiphone on the back. As far as the controls, they're your standard Epiphone style knobs. The color just isn't quite exactly right, but it is what it is with two volumes and a master tone. You do get the thumb pointers though, that's nice. Now it is important to note that you're not just picking the pick guard color when you choose between black and white, you are also picking your output jack color. So in the future, if you can't find a black one and you're thinking that you're just going to have to replace the pit guard, if you could only find a white on the used market, for example, you're also going to want to custom order a new output jack plate if you want it to be completely matching. 
We've also got a Karina neck with the Indian Laurel fretboard. As far as the fretwork right outside of the box, it doesn't have that typical super scratchiness to it, so it seems they're putting a little bit more attention to detail on the frets of these models. It's got your standard 22 medium jumbo style frets. You've got your acrylic dot inlays. It's still a 24 3 quarter inch scale length with a 12 inch fretboard radius. And I measure about 11 degree headstock pitch and a relatively shallow 2 degree neck pitch. Sadly, I didn't have this tool when I was documenting the expensive versions. I'd be curious to see if that's any different. But what we can compare side by side is our nut width. The Epiphone is 1.7 inches. And at the 12th fret, 2.09. First fret neck depth, 0.91. And by the 12th, 1.02. So wow, surprisingly, they aren't all that different. Now, as far as the neck shape, it's kind of strange. You kind of have that Epiphone D-shaped neck where the back of the neck is very flat all the way up until the third fretting area. It's at that point when it just becomes a nice rounded neck profile, in my opinion. And so to illustrate this, I took it at the first fret, the third fret, and the 12th fret. You can really tell what I'm talking about. That flat D-shaped neck right up here, but then it quickly turns into full rounded and just stays full rounded. The nut itself is graph tech, so that's always good. And then here is our headstock. We've got some more sign offs in our truss rod cavity. The truss rod cover uses three screws, so that's different from the Gibson iteration, but it's just blank. And as expected, we've got the Epiphone logo up here done up in Perloid. It's kind of hard to see from this angle, but yes, it is Perloid. But I love the fact that we actually have the clues and tuners on these. It's just what makes 50s Explorers cool, in my opinion. So the first thing that really catches my attention is the backplate cover. The color is not right. It's pretty much like everything else we've discussed. There's just a little bit too much red in this, where it's really jarring if you've actually seen the custom shot version. But it's nice that they actually tried to replicate the brown backplate. That's pretty cool. It's got shielding on the back of it too. And it does look like they're giving us the CTS 500K pots. But it doesn't look like we get orange drop capacitors though. Then looking back here, this almost looks like a seam line, but I, I don't see it over here. So I think it's just part of the natural wood grain because the actual seam line is running right here and overall the quality of the Karina on this it actually looks pretty good as compared to what I was expecting the thing I like about Karina is the bacteria eating the wood that's what these dark spots are so this one at least has a little bit of that going on The transition from the body to the neck, you get slightly different wood grain going on. But here's one thing I really hate. These stickers, normally they're placed like right here, but now that we've got this giant double diamond logo back here, they've decided to put them lower on the neck instead of like right here. Now these will come off real easy. So it's a non-issue as long as you're not trying to keep the original stickers. But it appears you have a one piece Karina neck on these. But then as far as the headstock goes, it looks like they're using some sort of a scarf joint on these to then place this on here. And our tuners are labeled Epiphone Deluxe. The serial number of this one dates to 2022, so that kind of matches what we saw on our pickups. So despite these being a 2023 model, you can find some that were made in late 2022, predating the launch. All said and done, not a bad weight, 7 pounds, 1.8 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds. <laughs> This is impressive. I wasn't expecting it to sound that good. I love the middle position on this. But the bridge has got a good bite to it as well. I think the neck pickup is just a little bit too dark for my personal tastes. So far, 
far, the only thing I don't like is the strap button location on these, because it's not a very balanced instrument. I know it's traditional to have it here, but putting it at the back of the heel, I think would fix all of your issues. So if you're looking to have this as a player, you're probably gonna wanna look into that or a better gripping strap. Very nice. Easily the best Epiphone I've played in a while. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting that much out of these things, to be honest. I just thought, you know, they'd be really nice tributes to the Gibson counterparts that just happen to have the Gibson pickups, but wow, I'm, I'm impressed. And if you really think about it, how much are these Gibson pickups worth? Yeah, about 300 bucks. How much is the case worth? I think that's 200. So even though 1300 sounds like a lot for one of these, if you take off 500 of that price tag, that takes it down to 800. And that's about what these were anyways from the AMS exclusives. And I would say this is actually a better version of those because I had a lot of bad time trying to get one of those that didn't have a headstock crack in the side. I think I had to go like through three or four of these and this has all the 50s elements. So if you're looking for a Carina Explorer that's got the looks and it's got all the electronics, I would definitely say this is a nice guitar outside of the whole strap button situation. That's pretty much the only thing I can say bad about this guitar is I feel like I constantly have to be supporting the neck and I hate that. This particular one was a new guitar day purchase, so that means a fan purchased this guitar through me so we could share his new guitar with you. If you're interested in doing something similar on a guitar valued over 1200, feel free to reach out to me via my website. But thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.